ready for this because I'm quite literally about to spill the tea. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Victory Marie. And in today's video, we are going to be doing something a bit different. We're not doing a vlog. We're going to be doing an advice video, okay? So basically, y'all have been asking me and asking me so many YouTube questions, basically in every single video. And I decided to do a dedicated video just to answer every single question y'all have. On my Instagram, I basically did like a story where I was asking y'all, what do you want to know about YouTube? Just anything and everything you can think of just ask me because i'm gonna answer it just a quick rundown my name is victory i have been on youtube for about a year now a little bit over a year and i think i have learned so many things from youtube i have basically garnered 25,000 subscribers and i'm gonna just basically share with y'all the tea because i've been growing a lot for the past couple months now i'm pretty sure i got 15k in the past two months okay so we're gonna do this video in sections the first section is equipment i feel like everyone starts off with this but i do have a few things to say about it first question is what is the best equipment for beginners i would say for people that are beginning on their iphones all you need is something to record with which is your iphone it should be probably like you know a newer phone and also a tripod so if you're going to start off on your phone that's really all you need if anything else maybe a ring light but you really it's not essential also it's just easy to have a tripod already because you don't want to be stacking up a whole bunch of books candles to get your perfect angle now if you're starting off with a camera it's a little bit different i would say you need an sd card first of all you need an sd card reader so if you're going to be transferring your footage on your phone or ipad you need an sd card reader it's like literally vital and you also need batteries and a battery charger so you can charge your camera but it's easier to have a battery charger that charges your batteries for you so you don't have to like charge your camera while you're recording if that makes sense so that's basically all the beginner stuff you need it's definitely not too much you really don't need a lot and for me my camera it actually came with all that stuff already in a starter kit so if you want to get a camera you can probably get a starter kit with it. It's very, very easy to get that. Speaking of which, the next question is what camera do you use? I use the Sony ZV-1. I got it from Best Buy. And it was around $800 to $900. I think it was maybe a little over $900 because I did get the starter kit with it. This camera is super, super nice. You can buy a lens for it, but you don't. it's not necessary if you don't want to. I just really, really like it. It's my first camera ever. And I would say it's one of the higher quality cameras based on what I've seen on YouTube. Someone asked, what are your camera settings? I actually use the factory settings, okay? I feel like it's doing what it needs to do. I also reset the camera settings from time to time because if I'm handling the camera sometimes, I might accidentally toggle the camera settings and so I will reset it from time to time. If you really want to like change your camera settings, definitely go ahead and look up any videos on YouTube because they're going to be very helpful for you, okay? Me personally, I, it's not really my cup of tea. I feel like the camera does what it needs to. How long did it take you to get a camera? I think it took me about eight months to get a camera. Six months after starting my YouTube channel, I blew up. And that was in August. And I think two to three months later, I finally got a camera for my birthday. I actually started out on a iPhone XS Max. And let me tell you, I was making content off that phone, okay? It was, even back then, it was outdated. Like, y'all know, the XS Max has been very much in the past so that's one thing for you you can make content with an iphone it does not matter it's not going to make you less of a youtuber if you have an iphone as a camera i did upgrade to a camera just because i kind of wanted to level up my quality a bit but it is not like something that you need to do someone asked any camera recommendations okay i would say obviously my camera the sony zv1 i also just found out that there's a sony zv1 mark ii that just came out y'all so that's kind of cool if y'all want that camera i'm pretty sure it's going to be around the same price and then there's also the sony zve 10 which i know is a little bit bulkier and you actually need to buy a lens for it which i think will cost extra the zv1 it doesn't need a lens at all the camera just comes like that and you just record i don't really know much about canon cameras but i know that there is the canon m50 that a lot of people use for sit down videos and there's also the canon g7x of course mark one two and three and i would say those are actually really good cameras as well so yeah just pick whatever you want based on the content you're going to be filming and just your overall preference of the quality all right someone asked how do you edit honestly i really cannot give a clear answer on how i edit personally because every single video is literally different i'm always learning something new when i'm making a video so i can't really say how i edit but i can say that i do work in sections and i try to work from beginning to end because if you know anything about CapCut, they like to move around your stuff if you add things in the beginning. 
I don't really know how to describe it, but if you got a clip with an overlay and you put another clip in front of that, that overlay is going to move, okay? So I try to work from beginning to end so nothing is moved. I would definitely say you need to research your stuff, okay? Whatever editing software you're using, you need to research it. Every editing software is different and you really don't know what an editing software can bring until you really research about it. What editing software do you use? So I use CapCut. I used to use just the original regular cap cut when i was starting out but i think like about two to three months ago i think maybe two months ago i upgraded to cap cut pro and i would say it is worth it there's a few perks to it i mean it depends on the type of videos you like to make if you want just like kind of raw videos not as much edits on it you probably don't need cap cut pro but i do think it is a great way to level up your videos also if you don't know how to edit then just look at other youtubers and what you enjoy in their editing style and just kind of see how that's going to pertain to your videos now we're going to go on to the next section which is the basic this is the stuff that i think everyone should know about let's get started on to the first question which is when should i start i would say you need to start immediately okay there's no better time than now you're not going to learn anything and you're not really going to grow just by watching videos about how to start you need to really start some things i can't even really tell you because it just comes with the experience of being a youtuber and also the fact that everyone's journey is different people have acquired different knowledge of being a youtuber based on their journey so you really won't know how to do it until you actually do it how do you figure out your vlog style see what you enjoy watching you know like see what type of content you engage in and what you like to watch because that's probably an indicator of how you would want your vlog to be you can also experiment and just try new things out maybe one day you film a video that's a bit more montage -y, not as much talking and then the next day you could film a video that's a lot more talking more raw and just uncut where do you find your background music okay this one is going to be pretty interesting because i'm going to tell you all something i don't think i've ever heard in one of these videos first of all let's just start with some common knowledge searching up no copyright music on youtube is not really going to do anything for you in my opinion those are very saturated keywords you're probably just going to find like overused sounds already or just outdated sounds that have already been copyrighted for me i actually use epidemic sound i have a subscription with them and i would say it's so much worth it because i have so much to choose from and i don't have to worry about copyright at all so yeah i would highly recommend epidemic sound and if you're trying to find background music with like remixes or like actual music that's been you know kind of reworked you can probably go to two channels i know that there's kh no copyright and there's also tipsy turtle which the first one kh no copyright i would say you can 100 percent trust them every single time i've used their music they have never gotten me copyrighted and then the second one tipsy turtle you probably have to watch out a little bit because some of their stuff is copyright you just have to check the description they do have a lot of really great remixes that you can use on your video that is non copyright now let's get into something i don't think i've ever heard anyone talk about for me i'm the type of person that doesn't really like a lot of words in my background music like i don't really like vocals if anything i'll just put it in my preview so i usually just use beats for my background music the way i find my beats that are like non-copyright on youtube is you're just gonna search up okay this is the best way to find them free for profit type beat so for example if you want to chill background music you would just type out on youtube free for profit chill type beat that will give you a whole bunch of selection it's not oversaturated and it's just a better way to find like actual beats that match your videos because i will say music is such an important thing in your video i feel like a lot of people don't really say this but music can literally make or break the flow of your video and the way your music matches your clips is a big big deal it's a big factor in like the audience retention rate and just how much they're interested in the video that's a big reason why i don't really use remixes because a lot of time y'all the remix channels they be doing way too much like the remix don't even sound like the song anymore you can also for the girlies that actually do want like some vocals in their background music you can also search up free for profit and then you would search up the artist and also sample type beat so for example if you want like a brand fire song in your background music you can search up free for profit brand fire sample type beat 
that will get you just a whole bunch of beats that have Brent Fias's vocals or like a sample of his song. Usually for these type of sample beats, I will use them in the preview of my video. So that's going to be like in the beginning because of the fact that, like I said, I don't really like music vocals during my montages. So if y'all looked at my last video, that Starships by Nicki Minaj intro, that was literally a sample type beat. It literally sounded like the original thing and it was a sample type beat. So it wasn't copyrighted and it was free for profit. Which I wanted to tell y'all one more thing about this. Make sure the beat says free for profit, okay? And not just free. So basically most beats will say either free for profit or free. Like they'll have brackets around it. I'm going to try to put up a visual so y'all know what to look for. But basically they're not the same thing, okay? Free for profit and free are not the same thing so free for profit means that you can use that particular beat for profit like they don't care if you make money off of it but free means that you can use that beat but it's free for non-commercial use meaning that you cannot make money off of it and use it make sure you really really look out for that because producers will copyright you for using their beat and not purchasing it someone asked how do you make your thumbnails i use canva for all of my thumbnails literally forever now i used to use fonto but mm, it just didn't give the same and also i feel like canva just renders better I also want to know i feel like all of y'all have heard this before thumbnails are so so important they are literally vital to your video and i would say they are basically one of the three factors that will make your channel blow up or make your video blow up the other two are consistency and good content but we're gonna get into that later so yeah i would say really really take time to look at your thumbnail because that literally determines whether or not someone is gonna click on the video or not if you get the view or not and most of the time youtube is looking at this youtube takes insight on whether or not people are clicking on your video there's literally a part of your youtube studios that says impressions click through rate meaning that's the percentage of people that are clicking your video and you want that number to be very high okay as high as it can possibly get so make sure your thumbnail is literally perfect some ways to help with this is take pictures okay take pictures every single time you're doing a video the whole way through just take your pictures on most of my videos i basically edit the pictures on visco and yeah i'll put it into canva edit it a little bit and there we go we got a thumbnail what are some good first videos so some good first videos i would say are trendy videos people love some good searchable videos okay it's great for getting your channel out there because people are just searching for it all the time so people will go through and see your video and they're going to click on it in the beginning i would recommend to do a mix of trendy videos and a mix of videos with your original ideas if you don't have any original ideas you can't think of anything then just solely do trendy videos that's not a bad thing either if anything that's probably better honestly some examples of some trendy videos you can do are room transformation what's on my iphone morning and night routine school videos back to school videos those are going to do amazing especially back to school season people go crazy for that someone asked how do i promote my channel i actually also have a great tip for this that i've never heard anyone say either i also got a really unique question about this but we're gonna get into that first and foremost you need to make sure that you are basically putting your video everywhere any social media you have put your video on there okay promote it don't be scared that people are gonna see it because honestly if you're gonna start a youtube channel everyone's gonna find out about it one way or another there's really not a way to like bypass that so just do it honestly put it on your instagram stories put it on tiktok put it on youtube so someone also asked what do i do if i don't have any other socials but i still want to promote my video put it on youtube okay there's a community tab where you can promote your video and by the way if y'all didn't know the community tab it has its own algorithm so have y'all ever noticed when you see a community tab from somebody that you're not even subscribed to that is because it has its own algorithm so the community tab will just spread your video to whoever it thinks it should be seen by or people that have interests that are similar to your video so make sure that you're promoting on your community tab and by the way community tabs i'm pretty sure they're open for everyone now they used to have a requirement to be open but now they can be used by everybody. So definitely use that to your advantage. Next question is how do I brand myself? This is honestly a great question. And the first thing I'll have to say is be yourself. You need to be yourself when you're making YouTube videos because people can tell. And also why would you want people to like you for a different personality? Like imagine if you actually were liked by people and you are basically putting up a persona. People don't actually like you, they like your persona. So just be yourself, okay? People will like you regardless because they're going to be able to tell that your personality is actually genuine. So a few things I could say about branding, just use graphics that pertains to you or your interests 
or things that are unique to you. This can be with anything, literally. Your intro, your channel banner, like all that stuff. Even your YouTube descriptions can have like some type of personality that shines through. And I actually just updated my description box, y'all. So yeah, definitely just look into the little things that will just make your brand you. This is a great way for people to differentiate you from other YouTubers and it gives them something to latch on to be like, oh yeah, I know her for this and she does this. And the great thing about branding is that you can control it, okay? You can bring to the table whatever you want to bring to the table. Next thing is, where do you find your fonts? I have been getting this question so much, y'all. I even had to post like the fonts I use on my community tab because y'all were literally going crazy over the fonts I use. Basically, the website I use to find all my fonts is thefont.com. I love using this site. They have so many versatile fonts that you can use and they're always coming out with new ones. So on the website, there's like basically themes that you can look at. And the themes that I like to look at the most are retro, groovy, and sans serif. There's also a tab for recently added fonts. And those are usually fonts that not a lot of people have used yet. So you can use that to your advantage to be, you know, one of the first people to use it. Another thing is you can go on Pinterest and there's so many fonts on Pinterest. You can just search up the font fonts on Pinterest and there you go there's so many okay sorry for the lighting and angle change y'all I had to switch out my battery but now we're back and the next question is what do you do if your life is not aesthetic slash interesting enough to film I was getting a lot of different mixed questions about this also I wanted to mention that you can make anything worth filming or like cinematic enough to film it's just the way you do it and the way you show it it's not really about like what you're actually doing ways you can perfect this is by looking at tutorials on YouTube on how to make your videos more cinematic or more professional. Whatever vibe you're trying to give off with your YouTube videos, try to search up tutorials in order to help you with that. The only real tip I can really give you is that try to make your background presentable. Like if you're filming on your desk, you know, and you have some clutter right there, maybe move it out the way. Just these little things will make your videos a lot better because it's like more clean and just stuff like that. Next question is, what do I do if I film with my phone? If you're filming with your phone, the biggest tip I can give you is to film with your back camera. I know it's hard for filming in public because obviously you want to see yourself and it's just not really that natural to film with the back camera, let alone filming in public, whatever. But I will say it makes a difference. Filming with your back camera, like you can do this when you're at home, you know, places that you're comfortable filming with the back camera, film with the back camera because it's so good. When I had my iPhone XS Max, I would do this all the time. I would literally do that MacBook trick where you can like see your phone on your MacBook. If you have a MacBook, take this to your advantage. I don't really know about other computers, but I know that there's ways to see your phone screen on your laptop or you could even honestly put a mirror behind your phone screen it's also something you can do just as a viewfinder or something to obviously see yourself with but yeah the back camera is the best camera that will be on your phone and now we're going to go on to the next section which is the analytical part of youtube i'm going to be giving y'all receipts so stay tuned for that and also this is the part of the video where it's a lot more how questions literally i think all the questions i'm going to be answering in this section is just going to be like how do you do this how did that it's more of hows and not really whats. So yeah, let's get into the first one, which is how do you make viewers more engaged in your videos? So what engagement is, is like watch time, subscribes, likes, comments, basically anything that a person can do to your video. So the biggest advice I can give you on this is never create a dull moment in your video, okay? Have something always happening so that it's interesting, okay? Do not stretch your video, okay? Don't try to make it as long as possible because people can tell and also it's really not going to amount to anything within your quality the quality of your video has the least to do with the length of it so a good quality video will always be better than a long long video because of the fact that it's quality content if it's quality content people are going to want to watch it and they're going to want to re-watch it that's how you know it's good in contrast to the long video where you might not even get through it and if you do get through it you're not going to want to re-watch it it was a bad experience for you and i've actually definitely seen like more engagement on videos that have a lot going on and just like different things incorporated within it. I'm having like different factors within my video. I'm not just talking the whole time. I'm not trying to drag it out. And I've definitely had my fair share of videos that I'm dragging out, constantly talking because I want to hit that 20 minute mark. And let me tell you, it is not a fun thing to look back on because the only thing you're going to feel when you look back on that video is yeah, it's 20 minutes, but who's really going to watch that? And it's just going to make you cringe. Honestly, I cringe at some videos because 
I'm like, girl, why did you drag this out? Like, it did not need to be dragged out. Next one is how do you grow active supporters? Again, with the engagement, engage with your followers. If they're engaging with your video, engage with them. This shows your followers that you care about their opinion and what they have to say about your video. And if you're constantly engaging with your followers, you know, commenting back to them, liking their comments, all that stuff, they're more likely to comment on your upcoming videos. It's a great way to build a bond. The biggest thing you can take from this is be a humble creator, reply back to your comments. How long did it take for you to get monetized? Like I said, I got monetized six months into making YouTube videos and it was definitely like a peak type of thing. It wasn't like a gradual, you know, it was definitely with one video I blew up and it was my first day of freshman year video. That's how I got monetized. If you didn't know, to get monetized, you have to have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, which I actually would say is doable. If you really just hop onto the trends and do what's trending, you're gonna get it very, very quick. Just pay attention to the seasons of YouTube. There's a lot of different seasons. Okay, there's fall season, like prep with me for fall. There's a lot of maintenance vlogs that go on every single time a new season is coming up. There's also obviously back to school season, New Year's, Christmas season, Vlogmas, all that stuff. You have to just pay attention to it because when you really hop on that trend, it can get you really, really far. Next one is how do you actually get monetized? Like I said, 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours is our goal. Trendy videos, I've been saying this, as well as being consistent. All right, so this is one of the three things we need to look for. We basically covered good content and we covered good thumbnails. Now it's time to cover consistency. I'm going to give you all some receipts for this one just so that you can really see the importance of consistency about two months ago i hit 10k right and i really wasn't posting like i needed to i think i was posting maybe once every week or once every two weeks after my new york vlog i really made up my mind and i told myself i'm going to post twice a week no if ands or buts about it so i made a schedule for myself and my first video that was going to start with this schedule of tuesdays and friday uploading was my new york vlog so that vlog went up on a friday i think it was like march 17th or something it was during winter break and obviously that video it got normal Normal views YouTube doesn't really know what you're doing yet so my next video which was my makeup routine I uploaded that on a Tuesday you know following the schedule in that video it actually flopped it did not do good at all but I kept going and I kept being consistent I still followed my schedule next video I uploaded was on a Friday and it was my spend the day with me only three videos in trying to follow that schedule I had gained like 20k views in the first like few days of that video going up so I was like, okay, this actually works. So yeah, I just kept doing that. And within a few more uploads, I was able to get 100K on my get ready with me for the second semester video. So this is literal proof that consistency really, really will help you. Obviously, you have to take the good content and the good thumbnails with it. These three things need to work together. Without one, the rest fail. And the good thing about it is that you can start this whenever. I already had 10K subscribers when I decided to be consistent. So that really tells you a lot. Also, one thing I wanted to touch on is that your videos perform by themselves. I feel like a lot of people get discouraged. Like if they make a video and they upload it and it doesn't get the views they want, they're like, okay, I can't post another one because that one's going to be bad. But I literally had my makeup routine out, y'all, and it literally was in the hundreds. Usually the view count for my videos at that time, like the average, it would be around like 4,000 after a couple days. And that video stayed in the hundreds for so long even after i posted my spend the day with me. and that video did really good so keep going and also understand the fact that your last video's performance does not contribute to your latest video's performance if that makes sense like youtube is not looking at your past videos to decide whether or not they should push out this new one that you just made so keep making content so now we're going to move on to sponsors because i kind of wanted to you know touch on this a little bit so if you want sponsors you need to make a business email okay put it in all your description boxes and also make it short and sweet don't put a lot of like dots in it don't do too much just make it simple i would also say this for your username because I can say from experience, you should probably put a name that you know you're going to stick by. It doesn't have to be your real name. In my opinion, your real name is a great channel name on YouTube. It can never go wrong. It's unlikely that there's going to be somebody else with your name. I would say to put your real name, but you can do a different name. It really doesn't matter. Just as long as you make it short and sweet and easy to be typed and easy to be read, okay? I'm just going to say that's a really important thing that I feel like not a lot of people talk about. And the OGs know, okay? This channel's name was not always Victory Marie. If y'all know, y'all know. Process of having to change my channel name to Victory Marie was such a hassle, y'all. I had to change basically all my other socials and some of the socials did not have my name available. 
So it was just a lot of different things that I had to deal with. I also obviously had to change my business email. There were also still business related emails in my old one. It was just a lot. So when you're picking out your YouTube username and your business email, make sure it's just simple. It's something you're gonna stick with long term, like forever. How do I get brands to notice me? I also had a big thing with this where people wanted to be a wig influencer. If you want brands to notice you, you have to make the content that pertains to that brand's products first. Like you can't be a wig YouTuber if you don't make wig content. They're not gonna send you a wig just because you want one. You need to make wig content first. If you want skincare slash hygiene brands to like reach out to you, maybe throw in a hygiene routine or a skincare routine in your vlog. Basically what I'm saying is that you can't expect Lululemon to sponsor you if you're a gaming channel. That's just what I'll say. Make the type of content that matches that brand's products so that they're gonna see you fit as a person that can spread the word about their brand, about their products, all that stuff. Also, I know some brands have like ambassador applications that you can fill out if you wanna be like an ambassador for them. They can reach out to you for certain collabs. I don't really know much about it, so just kind of look into that if you're interested in that. How do I know my worth during sponsorships? So I'm guessing you mean like how much should you ask the brand to pay you? So if you really, really do not know how a brand should pay you, you can ask them for their budget. Ask them, what is your budget for this specific video? It never hurts to ask, and it might widen your perspective a lot more to how much you can really get paid on YouTube through sponsorships. Because y'all would be surprised how much a brand is willing to really pay you for a sponsorship. And if they don't give you their budget, just aim high, okay? There's nothing wrong with that because the worst they're gonna say is that hey we can't do that here is the alternative thing we're gonna pay you so it's not gonna be the worst thing in the world a brand is not just gonna ghost you because your rates are too high if you don't know what rates are it's basically just like how much you want to get paid so yeah don't be afraid to aim high and also listen to a brand's budget if a brand tells you here is our budget then take that into consideration when working with other brands. This is basically the end of the video. I really, really hope y'all enjoyed this video. I hope it inspired y'all to start your channel or to keep going with your channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next one.